questions. All right. Good morning. Um, hope you all had a great weekend and um, working on uh, working on this Monday, huh? Uh, but uh, it was it was a good weekend for us and felt good to finally get on the field. Talked a lot about it and. I think you guys were running out of questions to ask at some point here because it was uh, the same ones and not much to go off of with all the new staff. But it was good to get out there on the field. And uh, I thought really pleased with the way our guys just uh, sustained the energy. I'm not talking about just during the game, but really all week long and uh, got more and more excited. And then just really from the beginning of the, to the end, uh, a lot of focus. You know, we got a lot of guys on the football field and really felt like they were all ready to go. And again, never going to be perfect, but uh, and a lot of things we can work on. But I appreciate, you know, just where we're at right now, and uh, it kind of tells us where we're at and what what we uh, need to be taking to the practice field here this week. But um, you know, a lot of different things popped up. Uh, I think uh, maybe even a question or two has been asked just about the communication uh, and how that headset thing all went down at the beginning. That was something. You know, you've had crackles and you've had times where it goes down for maybe three seconds, but uh, just really having to change things up there, uh, that, that was new. Uh, I think by play two, we had our left tackle, left guard, and center all out of the game for play two. So uh, some interesting moments in there, but, you know, just guys really worked through it, um, just keeping their poise. Uh, that includes coaches, you know, uh, Coach Sheridan having to come down from the press box and then go back up and, Trying to figure out if you're going to get caught, uh, you know, caught in the in the middle of that, and you know, we're, we'll be fine that way. It's just there is a lot of communication that does happen, you know, not just from from him to the to the signalers, but uh, others as well. Uh, just getting personnel in the field, so uh, we we were fine. We were fine. It's just different uh, different than the normal protocol. So I think uh, you know, red zone, different parts of the game uh, that we really. Excelled in uh, was good to see uh, four for four offensively took a knee there at the end and then uh, uh, defensively, uh, you know, not giving up any scores uh, on two attempts when they got in the red zone. Uh, the two takeaways early with Keon uh, were really big with the momentum uh, really, you know, got the crowd going and kind of about 10 or 15 minutes, whatever it was where we take the field and everyone's ready to go. And then all of a sudden that delay in the action. So uh, Keon's takeaways and uh, a sack there early uh, really got uh, that momentum and energy back to our whole football team. So uh, really ple pleased with where we're at week one and looking forward to uh, making those big steps that I think uh, usually exist uh, going from week one to week two. All right, Nick, uh, start on the front here, right, Nick. Yeah, too, if I can, first, uh, what, what did the prognosis show for Caden Proctor? And also, when you watch the film of the offensive line, uh, what did you see in terms of things you really liked and things to improve on? Sure. Um, you know, Caden's got a shoulder shoulder situation there. Um, it's one that we will be able to manage. And so uh, that's, that's, that's a positive. And uh, it was just something as we go through the week that we'll just continue to evaluate. And, you know, it probably won't be something early on here we'll be, be rolling with. But uh, as the week goes on, be something we can continue to evaluate and be hopeful for. Uh, when it comes to the offensive line and uh, this, you know, the way they executed, I, I mean, I give Elijah a lot of credit, you know, has maybe played just a couple of practices early in camp at left left tackle and for the most part was at right tackle. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, he and Book took a long, uh, took some took some pride in really trying to, you know, have some uh, have a great game there and and, you know, kind of rise up in the midst of that adversity. Uh, there's, you know, the, the big touchdown to Justice, uh, where we pulled both the right side, uh, right guard, right tackle. Uh, that was that was fun to see because I thought there was some really some physicality on the front side, you know, uh, and then uh, the pull, doing a good job of adapting to what the defense was doing and and the trust that I think exists uh, is probably something that's undervalued. The trust from the first puller to the second puller and also the second puller to our tailback with Justice carrying the ball. So. You know, that comes through repetition, that comes through talking about it. Um, you know, protection wise, uh, they got to us, got to us early, you know, um, you know, with this one sack. But uh, for the most part, I think our quarterbacks really felt comfortable back there. Uh, there was times where we just did it. We picked up the protection and I know Jalen had that explosive run there when we were deep in our own territory. 
that's you know a tribute to the offensive line and our tailback all doing their jobs. Jalen trusting it, and when the seas parted, you know, kind of abort the pass uh, attempt and go take off and use your legs. And that's what I love to see from him on that play. Stay on the right, Charlie. You've mentioned how you watched all of Jalen's games last year. Just how did you see him progress after the South Florida game over the course of the season last year? How did he? Uh, oh, okay, I see. From from last year's game at this point, yeah. Um, I thought uh, being decisive at the end of the season was something that uh, I was really, you know, wanting to make sure he carried over. Just playing ball, finding ways to move the chains. Uh, you know, you get so caught up in this play, you're supposed to read it right to left, or you're supposed to read the safety, and there's so many things with checks. Um, and then there's a point where you just got to go play ball. And I think, think that that's something that he just got more and more accustomed to, and I felt like that was what he did on Saturday. You know, there wasn't a lot of opportunities. He didn't take that many snaps. He only threw it, he threw it less than 10 times. And so uh, not a big sample size there, but when he did have those opportunities, I thought he, he took off. Uh, I love the touchdown pass to K-Law, uh, where he stepped up, you know, was decisive, had his eyes downfield. Uh, you know he can run with the football, but uh, hit the eyes of the defense being on him, flipping it out there, and making a really accurate pass. And, and again, those are things that are undervalued. K-Law being able to attack the ball and hit it on the run, kind of having a feel of where the defense was at. You know, I mean, there's people at his legs, uh, K Law's legs. And so that's the difference between a six, seven, eight, 10 yard gain and a touchdown. So just little subtleties like that, I think, uh, were, were things I was impressed with, Jalen. And, uh, you know, a couple, couple times here and there, I mean, you only had two incompletions. And so, you know, you're just you're really getting down to what can we have done on those two incompletions. Um, communication, just always trying to make that better. I thought it was really good, but always trying to make it better. Uh, communication to the line, um, you know, just, uh, you know, all the way across the board coming on the sideline. I really enjoyed getting with him on the sideline. Thought uh, he was really locked in uh, the iPads and uh, all of that. I uh, really thought he utilized that to his advantage along with the rest of our staff, both sides of the ball. Um, really a, kind of a game changer when you look at it and getting that instant feedback and instant information to confirm what you thought happened uh, and be on the same page and be able to move forward. So, again, some good steps, you know, obviously early in the season. Katie on the left front row. Kane talked about how important it was going to be for guys to have to manage their time this week with this being the first kind of real game week Sunday to Saturday. Just for most of the guys, it being different having the Sunday practice, just kind of how did you see them respond to that yesterday or kind of what was it like them starting their game weeks? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, early early would be this fall camp or even the summer when kind of I, I showed them the schedule of of what a normal week would look like. They were kind of, kind of maybe wondering what Sunday was going to be all about, but I think they – they went through it and really, you know, felt good about putting last week's game kind of to bed, it being over and uh, getting a little bit of work in, uh, even to kind of maybe just a couple things that they can identify when they're watching film now that we threw at them or showed them uh, yesterday, just real late in the day. And so, um, you know, I think they feel like they probably got a head start. And now today's a day where, you know, they're off their feet and uh, really kind of getting their bodies back to where tomorrow morning uh, you turn around, you got a lot of good energy. And so I think they see the, the way the schedule comes together now to benefit them. And it uh, doesn't mean that you can't do it other ways, but that's just how we make it all work together. Stay on the left here, Ryan. Go ahead. Uh, Coach, uh, evaluate Wilkin Formby getting his first start uh, at right tackle. Yeah, I thought uh, Wilkin. I saw some 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 energy and some excitement out of him. Uh, we had some big plays there, and uh, you know, love that. Uh, he's, you know, I thought from a game standpoint, uh, very pleased with the steps. I feel like he's taken since not just even spring spring ball, but even through fall camp. He, um, it's always about progress, right? It's always about improving, and he is certainly doing that. He's. You know, raising his level of physicality, he's raising his level of communication and talking, and being on the same page with Jaden next to him. And so, uh, you know, I thought there was some there was physicality. I think there was some. You know, we, I use the word decisiveness with quarterback. I figured, I felt like he was very decisive and and really never looking uncomfortable on. Okay, I'm supposed to block this guy, or you know, assignment wise. 
Uh, Coach Cap, I think, had all those guys really locked in, and uh, Wilkin would have been a part of that. So um, good, good place to, to start the season well, with his effort and execution here after week one. Have you seen any extra level of energy from some of the guys who were back from last season at, for this game after what was almost a disaster last year? Uh, you talking about disaster last year? You talking about the USF game, or you know we haven't we haven't? I, I think there's there's a piece they probably remember, but you know I didn't experience that with them, and so it's not like I'm really drawing on that on that. Uh, you know, reminding them that it was a closer game. And, uh, you know, that falls in line with what one of our pieces of our program is to respect all and fear none. And so that respect factor was there this last week. It's going to be there again this week. And, uh, you know, I'm sure that there are certain guys that went through that as you're, as you're suggesting that, uh, you know, uh, ha have that a different type of determination on top of what we're trying to do with this 2024 team. But I think we're really trying to make it about this season, this team, and uh, trying to take the next steps that are necessary here going into week two. So left side, Tony. Uh, we don't see very many jersey alter uh, alterations uh, around here. What was the decision to put the C's on the captain's jerseys? And did you get any pushback from maybe some of the real traditional uh, boosters or fans or anything from that? I haven't because they probably hadn't seen it and known about it till the game, right? So, but that still hasn't happened since. Um, you know, I think the, the tradition before, right, was more of the captains at the end of the year. So there was something that you weren't going to do during the season. Just kind of something that, that I've done wherever I've been. Uh, you know, uh, we have a unity group, a, a leadership group. Uh, met with them real briefly here this morning and just kind of going over the whole week, the weekend, anything that uh, they just wanted to add. Uh, where they felt we were at with our mindset uh, in particular. But, uh, you know, then you have your captains. And uh, I know I mentioned before that uh, I thought the team did a great job. And I think it's an honor to be a captain. And along with that, uh, I've always liked to have, you know, understood uh, through the C uh, on the jersey, which is I think is really cool for those guys to be able to wear. Stand left side with Steven. Coach, to get three running backs into the end zone, like what confidence does that do for the offensive line and also that whole running back room? Yeah, and a couple of them were explosive plays, you know. So uh, I think it, it's confidence all around. It's confidence that the offensive line will will make those seams for you and uh, those uh, the jam the you know, jams play. Uh, just a lot of chaos happening out there with our guys uh, hitting blocks and and moving people. And uh, jam hitting that seam and just, you know, both goes both ways. You know, if we get our job done offensive line wise, the tailback's going to do his. You know, if I read it right as a tailback, the offensive line's going to, you know, fit the blocks up right. So, uh, yeah, that's, you know, running for 300 plus yards. Uh, that's something that, uh, you know, I don't take lightly. And then it's uh, tailbacks, it's Jalen, uh, both quarterbacks actually, you know, did a nice job when they're time came to go make plays. And so there's a lot of threats. You know, people I think have talked a lot about our threats on the outside and, you know, how that's going to look and that will continue to evolve uh, as we get more opportunities to throw the ball. But it all, you know, the game was meant to be played one way. You wear pads for a reason. It's uh, because it's a physical game. And so running the football is really important. Uh, we have two in the back room on the right. Let's start with Jamie and then we'll go to Ryan. Hey, Coach, did Saban reach out to you after the game? And if so, what did he say? And also, I know the priority is on the game itself, but how forward, how much are you looking forward to the Saban field dedication? Yeah, it's, uh, he, he, we, we talked actually before the game. He gave me a call on Thursday, and that was really cool for the guys. Uh, to, and he wanted me to pass along that, you know, he's thinking about them and, and wishing them the best and going to be, you know, rooting for them. And, uh, you know, you can just tell how much he, he cares about not just the program, but the individuals within it. So I uh, wanted to make sure I passed that along because I think that was important for them to hear, uh, important from, from both ends. And so um, and, and it's going to be an awesome night, uh, you know, having the field named in, in honor of coach. And that's, uh, that's really, really something special. I, you know, it's one of those things where you're going to play in it and you know what's happening, but being a part of the ceremony is something the team really can't do. Uh, we're in the middle of probably pregame meal and some of those type of prep work, uh, that type of prep work, but just in, in, to have that, uh, the whole, the whole honor uh, for Coach Saban, everything he's done here, 
uh, I know how how much that will mean to him and and uh, you know it's something that I know we have a lot of respect for and going to make sure that we you know continue to do everything we can to make it our house and protect our field uh, here on out just like it's been uh, in the 17 years that he was here. She took my question. Um, Coach, the, the long ball with Ryan Williams, two catches, two touchdowns, obviously you want to see that. Do you ever worry about a home run ball? And, and when stuff gets hard um, in the past, maybe you, you, stuff gets hard and you can't make those short passes because you rely on the home run ball? What's your thought on that as the season progresses? Yeah, no, I mean, that, that's just part of the progression. You know, the progression took uh, Jalen to Ryan. That's not the beginning of the progression on, on the first touchdown and for, in particular, well, both of them. It was a later part of the progression, you know, and that says a lot about a lot of things. It says that the line did a, a good job protecting and giving him time with our tailback. And then uh, in both of those routes concepts, uh, Jalen really working through the read and working to the very end. It might not have been the very last on one of them, but it, uh, again, uh, uh, it says a lot, you know, just thinking about Jalen and, and getting to Ryan, uh, especially on the second touchdown. You know, that's uh, coming across the middle, uh, putting it where it needed to be. Uh, confidence, uh, you know, as a receiver when you're running across the middle like that, that your quarterback's, you know, not going to put you in a bad spot. So Ryan can just focus on the football and, you know, then breaking tackles too, uh, two guys right there. So uh, I, we don't really, I don't feel like we rely on the long ball. I don't feel like that's what our offense is about. I feel like it's a progression, but there are usually big play opportunities that are built within almost, you know, really most of the concepts that we have, you know, and situational stuff too. Uh, you know, you're trying to move the sticks and you only need a few yards. Maybe there's not as many balls that are going to go down the field. That's that's just situational awareness for our quarterback and also our play caller. But uh, we want that. We want that threat. We want the defensive coordinator, the defensive side of the ball that we're facing to always be fearful of someone could get down the field behind them. And that helps us stretch both horizontally and vertically uh, the coverage that we're seeing. All right, we got time left for just two more questions. So we're going to start on the left. Here we go. Coach South Florida is known for its tempo. Uh, what's so? What's going to be the team's approach, and, and how are you uh, how are you preparing for that this Saturday? Yeah, uh, you know we saw changes of tempo this last week, and that's something you know that we'll be certainly focused on. Uh, it's hard to simulate that in practice. Uh, we do have, I think, different ways you can do that uh, within your scout team, uh, and you know. Communication, substitutions, you got to be really on your game uh, as a coaching staff and the players being ready to find those opportunities where you can sub in, whether it's a different package or just someone needing a breather. Uh, you know, and then being able to get your cleats in the dirt and uh, being able to, to be ready to, when the ball snap, get off the ball. Uh, that's, that's, I think, when, it, when we were, uh, which was most of the game, able to do that. Uh, we got a consistent pass rush and really felt like we executed well. There was a couple times where we didn't have that, and uh, we recovered. Uh, we kind of overwhelmed them sometimes uh, this last week, but we need to make sure just we're always ready to play. And you know, you you need to get that first step on guys. And so that's what a tempo is trying to do. It's trying to catch you off guard. It's trying to to not let you play fast or tire you out. And uh, you know, we, Coach Womack, he's seen it. And he's very experienced, so is our staff. They'll uh, they'll all do a good job of preparing the guys this week. Ariel, all in the back. Uh, Coach, after you post a shutout win, both sides of the ball doing their jobs, but I wanted to ask you about the specialists and what did you think about those guys on how to continue growing specifically with the punt and kickoff return? Yeah, that was, uh, you know, Met Burnup's just had a really good, he's had a really good fall all, all in all, and it did not surprise me that he was over 50 yards per kick. Uh, you know, did a nice job all night long. Uh, the snaps were, were all really good, made all our kicks, uh, the coverage units and everything. Um, got some, got more touchbacks even as the game was going on. So I think our guys just got uh, more uncomfortable. Uh, that was across the board with specialists, especially the new ones that are, you know, the kick, the kicking piece uh, that maybe haven't played in Bryant Denny before, uh, those guys getting more and more comfortable. Those are valuable reps for them. So even just extra points and just feeling what it's like, uh, the depth perception and all that, that comes along with 
uh, each stadium, but you know there should be a home field advantage piece to playing in your own. So uh, all that stuff I thought was done uh, at a high level, uh, and so you know they've worked hard for it, and we uh, expect big things out of them all year long. All right, thank you. Awesome, thank you, real tight.